Well, hello, and welcome to my first online story time. I've been missing all my friends at library story times, and so I thought, I'm just going to go viral. I'm going to go online and read some stories to you. This first one's called Moon's First Friends. One Giant Leap for Friendship. It's by Susanna Leonard Hill and Elisa Paganelli. I got this book this summer. If you get this book, or if you check it out from a library, you'll want your mom or dad or grown-up to scan these codes in the front of the book <clears throat> and in the back of the book, and you get to hear Neil Armstrong's first words, the words he actually spoke on the moon, and you get to hear a countdown. I think you'd enjoy it. Moon's First Friends. The moon was the queen of the night sky. She was so bright <clears throat> that everything she touched glowed with silver light. But after many, many, many years had passed, she was lonely. I'm gonna have to learn how to hold the book so the sun doesn't reflect on it. <laughs> we'll get it, we'll get it right. If only someone would visit me, she said. Hello down there, she called to the lumbering dinosaurs. If you come up here, you won't feel so heavy. You'll feel lighter than air. But the dinosaurs stayed where they were. Of course they did. Under the moon's watchful eye, the surface of the earth changed. The moon saw glorious new creatures come and go, giant tigers and mastodons and mammoths and dodo birds and whales and rhinoceroses and elephants but they all stayed on the earth and they rarely looked up to her in the night sky but then she saw something new at night people conjured fires like tiny stars there are millions of stars for you up here she offered the people stayed where they were. The moon watched as she circled and circled the earth on the wide sweep of the hot Sahara Desert. The Egyptian people built stone pyramids that towered toward the sky. <gasps> They're trying to reach me, the moon marveled. But though the pyramids were mighty, they came nowhere near high enough to reach the moon. Perhaps they didn't see her. She spun and she twirled from new moon to majestic silver pearl and back again, just showing off for all the people here on earth, but no one came. She watched as down on earth, people came up with all kinds of ways to get from one place to another, but they did not sail or drive or cycle or float up to the moon. But then, on a windy day in North Carolina, the first airplane flew above a beach. You're doing great, said the moon. You just need to fly a little bit higher. But the people on Earth only traveled to visit one another. Was it possible they didn't know she was there? At high noon, the moon slipped purposely behind the earth and the sun, blocking all the daylight. And then she slid aside again, allowing the sun to shine through. No one could have missed that, she thought. But still, no one ventured from earth. Would she ever have a visitor? That must have been an eclipse that the moon was doing, going in front of the sun. Just when the moon was losing hope, the people on earth began to experiment with and the moon watched with great interest, but the humans still had a lot to learn. One day, the moon's hopes soared. A chimpanzee in a mercury capsule rocketed toward her. A visitor at last! <laughs> Look at the monkey waving. <laughs> but alas, <clears throat> he returned to Earth without reaching her. At least he waved. And then, one hot 
July day. A tremendous rocket stood upon a launch pad with two small spaceships perched on top. The countdown began. I remember this. I was little. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. At 30 stories high and weighing six million pounds, the rocket rose into the air amid an explosion of flames, slowly at first and then faster and faster. The rocket fell away in stages, but the two spaceships hurtled toward the moon. They're coming, the moon said. They're actually coming. One of the spaceships remained at a distance, circling, but the other came closer and closer until at last its spindle legs touched down. Welcome, she greeted the men who emerged from the ship. <laughs> the astronauts walked across her surface with great bounding steps that made her dust bloom up. They seemed delighted with how far they could travel with each step. The moon gave them gifts of moon rocks and dust. Take these back to Earth, she said, and then even though I can't visit you, a part of me will be there. The men left her a present in return, a handsome plaque, and it read, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969. We came in peace for all mankind. I was six years old. Yep. They also left her a beautiful flag with red and white stripes and a scattering of white stars on a blue background. I bet you know whose flag that is. Mars. Too soon, the astronauts had to leave. Goodbye, the moon said as their ship floated away into the starry distance. Come back any time. She sighed with happiness. At last, someone had visited. And now she had hope that it would happen again and again. And maybe one day you will visit her. The end. At the back of this book are some bits of information if you're interested in the moon and the phases of the moon, and also astronauts and rocket ships and the history of everything we've done to get to the moon and then beyond the moon. Next, I think we're going to Mars. I'm not sure, but that's the plan. I'm going to try to record some stories um, every few days. Let me know how you like them. Bye.